Uh, now, Jeff, there is there is a backlash um, to Google mm -hmm. that's starting up. As once upon a time, Microsoft was the coolest thing in the world, and then there was a backlash to Microsoft, as Joel Klein, the school's chancellor, well remembers. Um, but here's a post on our site from Matthew that says, some of what Google does is a little strange. For example, on Gmail, your email is more or less read to gear the advertisements around it to what you're writing. It's a little reminiscent of having somebody read over your shoulder. And Glenn in Queens is calling, I think, with a related thought. Hi, Glenn. Uh, hi. I really appreciate your show. It's sure. an interesting topic. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for your uh, guest. Why should we, what used to be called a consuming public, why should we contribute to the enlargement of a corporation which is a virtual monopoly to the extent that wherever you go, instead of saying, oh, just go on the Internet and search for something, people say, oh, go on the Internet and Google something, or simply Google it. Why should we contribute to the formation of a larger and larger corporation? Because I think that corporation helps us in return. Let me finish the, the thought. <clears throat> that is essentially going to become a monopoly that will eventually become too big to fail, so that when we have the next crisis, which may be an Internet crisis, <laughs> when yet a new media replaces this one, just as uh, uh, Blu-ray may be replacing CDs shortly, and uh, just as they replace uh, VHS, and so on and so forth, why should we, the taxpayers, then contribute to a bailout of this? Well, you're, you're getting a little ahead there on the bailout. I don't think we have a bailout yet, but I, I take the although, point. Although, yeah, the point, I mean, one of the, you know, things that I think our audience um, shares as a pretty common value right now, even if they haven't gotten it in Washington yet, is the reforms that are coming to the financial sector should probably leave us with a new banking system and insurance system where no one company is too yes. big to fail. Absolutely agree. And I think your suspicion of Google is well placed. You're, but just because it's big doesn't mean it's evil. We'll talk about that in a second. But, but what you're really contributing to, I don't think, is Google. You're contributing to the crowd, to the internet, to this vast, wonderful store of knowledge. Google is the one that came along and did the best job of searching that. Google also came along and did the best job of digitizing books. Now, the book industry could have and should have done that, but they didn't. Google stepped into the void. Same with newspaper ads and local ads. They could have uh, uh, been the leader in that, and they, let, they handed it over to Google. So we have to trust Google, and I know that gets a little scary, but, but that's where we are now, and I think it is in Google's interest not to mess with us, and we hope they're going to keep going. Well, no doubt there was a financial institution that uh, one, once upon a time created the credit card, and look where it has led us. I, for, my, for myself, I prefer using Alta Vista or one of the other search engines than Google. Is it still so around? I'll take the rest of my answer off the air. Thank you. It. Thank you very much, Glenn. By the way, I guess because we moved from um, talking about concepts related to how Google works to you supporting the company, we should establish, do you get paid by Google? Absolutely not. I had no relationship whatsoever with Google. I didn't even go there for lunch because I didn't want to sign the NDA that you have to sign to get into the place. Because my, I, I am admiring of Google, and I wanted that to be clear. That came from a distance and no relationship with the company. Um, let's, let's take another example from the book. You, you have uh, the automobile industry, right? Another one that's taking bailouts from the company, uh, from, the, from the country, from the government, from the taxpayers, you have a section called the Google Mobile. Now, could there actually be an open source designed, publicly designed car of the future? Maybe. Uh, start here. Every time I get in my car, I curse it because I don't have a 39 second plug there to plug in my iPod and listen to you, Brian. Of course. Um, if, they had, if the auto industry had been open to our suggestion years ago, they would have learned that, but they weren't open to it. Well, maybe you could have a car that's, let's say, unpainted, and you can take it and get it painted. Maybe you can then put on your own chairs. If you treat it more like a PC, it could be open source. I asked Fred Wilson, the venture capitalist, what he thought a googly car company looked like, and he said it looked like Zipcar. That, uh, as you know, allows people to just pick up cars all over the city and actually gets us to buy cars less. Now, that sounds absurd, but if a car manufacturer thinks they're just in the job of moving atoms, then they're kind of stuck in the same position that newspapers are in, thinking they're in the job of just printing paper. Maybe the car company could be in the position of creating an open source platform for others to help us make our individual ideal car. 